is uh, uh, a preventer. Uh, there is a joint contribution from uh, Roman as, as well as the University of uh, which is entitled Bulefin Selectivity Carbon Supported Potassium Iron Manganese CO Hydrogenation Catalyst, a Kinetic and Colorimetric Investigation. Some of whom have uh, spoken at this conference. 
all the different iron magnesium catalysts that they prepared using a number of different techniques. All catalysts, co-pressed data catalysts, uh, iron magnesium supported on silica and support on various oxides. We uh, supported allergen carbon at the conditions listed. You can see most of the catalysts were evaluated at elevated pressures at temperatures mostly at or above our, our uh, temperature. Hydrogen to CO ratio is uh, well below the ratio that we used. So there, uh, there are studies typically uh, maximize the amount of offense that you would expect. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to dwell very long on this slide. I just want to point out that for our clusters, you can see our activities per gram iron per second uh, were, def were definitely comparable to all the, the catalysts reported up to this point. And the cell activities were comparable, especially for the uh, FE2MN cluster and for the um, potassium promoted clusters. So we then went on uh, and decided to look at these clusters more thoroughly and investigate it with techniques other than just kinetic measurements to try and determine why the activity was enhanced. <coughs> the catalyst we selected are list, uh, listed on the left. Um, if you could, please remember the order in which this is arranged. Two triion dodecacarbonyl clusters, and an unpromoted Fe2MN cluster, MN2, then the two passive promoted clusters with a manganese containing cluster at the bottom. In all my subsequent slides, I will retain that order. The weight loadings of iron that we had were between 5 and 8 percent, with iron to manganese ratios that were very similar to what one would expect from the clusters that we used. Total weight loadings vary between 6 and 10 percent. Now, uh, the dispersions that we obtained for these catalysts following uh, our uh, a high temperature reduction were very high. We typically saw dispersions of between 0.6 and 0.7 percent, uh, which, uh, which corresponds to particles with sizes of about 20 to 40 angstroms. And notice that for some of these catalysts, uh, after the low temperature reduction, we had fairly low calculated uh, dispersion numbers. That's due to the fact that the uh, CO chem absorption is suppressed, probably due by the structure of the surface of these clusters. We know that those particles are extremely highly dispersed. Uh, following the kinetic measurements, we can see that for all our clusters, we retain a high dispersion even after extensive kinetic runs. So these particles are small, and they're also very well stabilized in carbon. Uh, the Epi2MN cluster has the interesting property that the dispersion increases significantly following uh, the high temperature reduction. And that's due, I will show later, to the fact that catalyst becomes somewhat more iron-like, especially in its kinetic properties. Uh, summarized here, again, is the uh, kinetic results and the, the uh, selectivity of results for these catalysts. You can see uh, the, the results after the low temperature reduction indicates that we had activities uh, of about uh, one unit that's presented there. And for all of the catalysts, our activities increased following a high temperature reduction as compared to the low temperature reduction. Also, most of these catalysts, the activities became, uh, were lower than those for iron, but they approached those for, for iron. Look, looking at the cell activities, however, you can see again that most of these catalysts got offense paraffin ratios uh, for the tri iron catalyst at about one to two which is high for highly dispersed iron catalysts. Uh, the iron manganese cluster had a, a significant enhancement of the selectivity of a value of about five following high temperature reduction. Uh, following, following high temperature reduction, this value decreased significantly to about two. The potassium promoter samples had high alpha selectivities after both treatments, and which remained fairly constant. On a turnover frequency basis, you can see that the, uh, the turnover frequencies were between 1 and 6 times 10 to minus 3 molecules CO per site per second. Very typical for iron catalysts. The main point is that these iron manganese catalysts are, are comparable in activity to those for the, uh, the unpromoted iron samples only. They are fairly active. The activation energies were measured, and again, for all of the catalysts, we see very reasonable values for the uh, activation energies, except for the passive promoter values, which were fairly high, as one would expect for, uh, for these catalysts. 
We also measured the heat of absorption of CO in these catalysts for the first time. You see that the, uh, the clear trend we can see is for two iron catalysts, the heat of absorption of CO is the lowest of all the samples, while a doubly promoted catalyst has the heat of absorption the highest of all the catalysts that we looked at, while the two singly promoted catalysts have heats of absorption is very, uh, very comparable. So it seems like the, the additive effect on the heat, the heat of it, the effect of the promoters on the heat of absorption seems to be additive. Now I'm going to start talking now about the physical character characterization of these catalysts, um, since we now have talked about the kinetic properties and try to relate the physical properties to the act catalytic activities. We supported the catalysts on carbon, and for the first time, we've been able to look at the infrared spectra of these, these uh, carbonyl clusters in carbon. And the point is, following impregnation, these clusters are intact. The spectra that we observe are virtually identical to the spectra that we see for these clusters in solution. So immediately following impregnation, but prior to decomposition, these clusters are intact and the metals are still in contact. We see uh, similar results for the MOS power effect spectroscopy runs where the clusters, when supported, retain their structure similar to what is observed in solution. We then looked at the decomposition of these clusters during the low temperature reduction. To simulate that, we heated the sample up to about 35 degrees C and looked at the decomposition of this cluster on the carbon. And we observed that the cluster, the initial cluster, which, uh, which is shown, shown by A, decomposes over an extended period of time into two distinct clusters, a diiron, a, a dimagnese cluster and an iron-containing cluster. Uh, we can also confirm this with mos effect spectroscopy runs where the, a similar cluster, the non potassium promoted catalyst, was heated one hour at 3.3 Kelvin which is just the, uh, which retained the cluster configuration. Uh, if you proceed to higher temperatures, the cluster transforms into the HFE4CO13 minus. And then following low temperature reduction, it, it gives rise to a specific spectrum. The bottom line is, during the decomposition of these clusters, they decompose into clusters different than the original cluster compound. And the clusters contain just iron and just manganese. I will show you later on that these, these clusters are, the iron and manganese, even though the clusters break up into s separate clusters, are still in very close contact because the uh, activities and selectivities are still affected by the presence of the promoter. The Mosbaugh effect spectroscopy runs after low temperature reduction for all the catalysts showed very similar spectra, which indicates that all these clusters after low temperature reduction decompose so that the iron retains a pretty much a, a what we call a D structure. Uh, a D structure also contains uh, some either iron 3 plus or iron carbide. Now the cluster is following a, a high temperature reduction <coughs> shows the following interesting behavior. For the triion dodecacarbonyl and uh, for the Fe2MN cluster, we see that the uh, D structure is retained. So for these two particular catalysts, they, be, they don't center, first of all, and secondly, they retain that specific iron structure. Uh, however, as you can see, even though these spectra appear very similar to the spectra after low temperature reduction, the kinetic properties are vastly different. I mean, these two catalysts were not as highly often selective as for the ones after low temperature reduction. There seems to be not a one-on-one -on -one correspondence between the MOSFAR spectrum and the kinetic properties of these catalysts. The potassium promoted catalyst, on the other hand, centered to, uh, to yield fairly uh, large iron particles uh, with diameters up to two, 300 angstroms, which showed an alpha iron spectrum of 77 Kelvin. And these catalysts retained their high olefin selectivity. So even though the bulk of the particle changed significantly, the olefin selectivity of the catalyst was not changed dramatically. We were interested in looking at the, uh, the surface of these different catalysts. We thought that we could probe that with the adsorption of CO and looking at the adsorbed CO with infrared spectroscopy. So for the first time, we were able to look at carbon-supported iron catalysts uh, using infrared for the CO adsorption. 
And we saw that for these catalysts, especially the trion dodecacarbonyl, we see only two bands, the 2020 and 2000, which, which corresponds very well to the peaks that one would see for uh, iron pentacarbonyl. So uh, we also have MOSFOL results to confirm this. These very small clusters reform tri uh, the iron pentacarbonyl um, upon CO introduction at, at 300K. If we purge with uh, helium following this, the clusters revert again to, to metallic iron. However, if you look at the manganese promoter catalyst, the amount of iron pentacol meal that you can form is significantly reduced. So it seems like the, the manganese is, is on the outer layer of the surface, preventing iron pentacol meal from forming. And at low temperature, following low temperature reduction, um, it's also able to affect the, uh, the selectivity of these catalysts. The potassium promoter catalyst did not form any iron pentacol meal, and we would not expect that for these large particles. We also looked at the, uh, the Mosfaller runs following kinetic uh, runs uh, for, for two hours under our typical reaction conditions. We can see that for the uh, Fe2MN cluster, we saw essentially an identical spectrum to what we had seen before. So the manganese prevents the catalyst apparently from, from uh, carburizing. However, for the, for the uh, potassium promoter catalyst, we see a, a carbide spectrum, typical epsilon prime carbide spectrum, which indicates the manganese is not incorporated in the bulk iron phase because iron manganese alloys, for example, do not carburize. So there's definitely a segregation of the iron and manganese following high temperature reduction in the potassium promoted catalysts. So uh, showing one more uh, model here. This is our model for the iron manganese catalyst following a low temperature reduction. Uh, we believe that we end up with a, with a particle containing D phase only with a potassium, full of potassium promoted catalyst on the outer surface of the particle. Uh, we have some manganese oxide phase present, which, which most probably is present at the surface of these catalysts. We have some iron 3 plus present. Uh, also on the surface of these, of these particles. Uh, as far as the physical properties are concerned, the catalysts are very highly dispersed. We have the phases as I just uh, presented. So that as far as the CO adsorption is concerned, we see uh, no infrared spectrum for the adsorption of CO, which we uh, are convinced uh, is due to the fact that the CO is highly tilted. Uh, because we expect to see the quantities of CO that adsorbs in the infrared spectrometer. <coughs> we also see no iron pentacarbonyl formation of these clusters following low temperature reduction. Kinetic information, the activity of Fe2MN is significantly lower than that for Fe3 on a per gram iron catalyst, but the selectivity is significantly higher for the Fe2MN. Following a high temperature reduction, uh, we have two different classes of catalysts, the potassium promoted ones and the non-potassium promoted ones. For the, for the uh, iron and the Fe2MN cluster, we retain the D phase. Uh, we also have the iron from the manganese oxide on the surface with some iron oxide present on the surface. But for the uh, potassium promoted ones, they center and we see a significant amount of, of alpha iron, which can carburize very rapidly. We also see the potassium on the surface and manganese oxide on the surface of this particle. However, we, we are convinced that the iron and the manganese phases are in very close proximity, even after all these treatments, because from our heat of adsorption measurements, in this case, in kilocalories per mole, we can see that it increases going from iron to the potassium promoted iron, also from the iron to the iron manganese, but from uh, these two catalysts, they both increase to the uh, doubly promoted catalyst. So to summarize then, the fuse reflectance was used for the first time to look at carbon supported iron and manganese clusters. As far as the decarbonylation is concerned, uh, the clusters decompose into uh, iron containing clusters and to manganese containing clusters during decarbonylation. Following a low temperature reduction, the, uh, you end up with a D phase and manganese oxide phases. Uh, the catalysts are very often selective. Uh, we see no iron pentacarbonyl reformation uh, if we adsorb, readsorb CO in the catalyst. And the uh, adsorbed CO is infrared act inactive for the reasons I gave before. After the high temperature reduction for the uh, 
non-passive promoter catalysts. We get highly dispersed catalysts that reform iron uh, pentacarbonyl upon CO adsorption at 300 Kelvin. The iron is present in the D phase, and um, iron and manganese phases are in close proximity. They're in contact. The passive promoter catalysts are uh, centered significantly uh, during high temperature reduction. No iron pentacarbonyl is formed. And the iron is present as uh, alpha iron. And uh, even though we have bulk iron, fairly large particles, the iron and manganese is still, are still in very, very close proximity and, and in contact. So uh, if you have any questions, I'll take them in. Thank you very much. You were a little bit vague about the D phase. I wondered uh, if that could be assigned to a super paramagnetic iron and an MP2 plus. It seems like that's what it looks like, and that's what we've assigned it to in, that, in our iron carbon. Yeah, that's exactly what we we assign it to a super paramagnetic iron zero containing a significant amount of iron two plus. We've done some studies where we've cooled this down to liquid helium temperature, and we see it splitting out into alpha iron, but we also see some, some species that we could possibly attribute to Fe2+. So you think it's a mixture of Fe0 and Fe2+, and, and Fe2 plus. but uh, the iron is definitely super paramagnetic. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> we see that in several iron systems, including iron aluminum, by the way. On an oxide also? Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. John? super paramagnetic uh, very, very easily. Even fairly small particles, you would expect to see uh, the hyper, you would expect the splitting in the spectrum. Even when we cooled down to four degrees, we did not see a significant splitting into these oxides as we would have expected. So no, we haven't seen that even, we, even though we looked for it. It does not rule out the possibility that we have some of the present. I wonder, you, you, during your decomposition, you, you show the formation of a uh, highly dispersed iron oxide and manganese oxide, probably. Now, where does it, well, I can understand it if you if you have an oxide support like, like aluminum right. now, when you have uh, plenty of uh, OH group, but in, on carbon there is no OH group. So where does the, the oxygen come from? Yeah. It's, a, uh, it's a very tricky question, but we believe that we form one of, the, one of the species we see in the moss bar spectrum, we can either attribute to a small amount of Fe3 plus or to super paramedically relaxed iron carbide. And what we think is happening is when we heat up with these carbonyls, remember that we have CO present. And we believe that as soon as you start forming iron zero, you dissociate CO, you start forming iron 3 plus, you start forming iron carbides. Okay. Further question? If not, thanks, thanks again.